Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Welcome to uh, the green room. Well, you know, that wall's green still. <laughs> uh, Monique Renee here, photographer, videographer, owner of Silverpaw Studio here in Colorado. And about once a month, we go live here on the channel to do a Q&A. A. And uh, if you want to know when those are coming up, just sign up for uh, the newsletter. And it's there's a sign up here at propetphotog.com. And I tell you that on Friday before, and it's usually a Monday afternoon, I'm playing with the time a little bit to uh, accommodate people in different time zones. So be sure to sign up for the Propet Photog newsletter, and you'll know about all the fun things actually happening here on YouTube and everywhere. So, so uh, <laughs> I have so much to talk to you about. What do you think of my uh, pictures? I put them back up on the wall. We had all that construction that happened on the other side and they actually ended up having to cut through this wall at one point. It had to be patched and repainted. And oh, <laughs> I just got pictures back up on the wall yesterday. Yeah, in the last couple of days. So nice to have kind of my office put back together, all the construction dust gone finally. <sighs> uh, but beyond that, I do have things to talk about. So uh, what are we on week six or seven on the 10 a week challenge? How's that going? So I definitely want to answer any questions that you have about the 10 week challenge uh, or anything you have questions of the um, pet photography, the business, the craft, things like that. So any kind of questions you have about the challenge or the business or craft of uh, pet photography or um, volunteer questions, that's fine too. Uh, a couple of things I do want to tell you, and I'm watching for the comments. I just keep looking over here so I can see your comments come in. Um, I do want to let you know a couple cool things. I got my list here. Hold on. Uh, oh, first of all, can I do a shameless plug? <laughs> Two of them. It is Amazon Prime Day today and tomorrow. And you may have noticed that whenever I post a video in the description, I have Amazon affiliate links, which means I get a tiny commission. So if you're doing any Amazon Prime Day shopping, you can always check out one of the links that I've got going on and follow that on over and help support me and the channel and all that kind of fun stuff. So <laughs> a shameless plug number one, uh, shameless plug number two, and I already showed you this, um, April, this website went live. I built this whole thing out, this whole thing, this nice clearing house of my downloads and my freebies and my courses and my community center membership. I've got a lot of fun stuff all under this one umbrella at the propetphotog.com. Uh, so be sure to check that out. I don't think I've mentioned that in the last several videos, <laughs> but it is there and it's this awesome resource for you. If you have any questions about that, you can type it, type them here today as well. Would love to have you in there. Oh, I'm already like, ah, I haven't gone live in so long. Let me get a drink of water. The other cool thing I want to tell you about, let me go to, let me go to comments because I'm going to put this in here. Ha <laughs> ha if you are watching on the replay, hi, thanks for joining us. If you have questions on the replay, you can always type them in the comments uh, as well. Okay, and I will see that. All right. Hello. I'm going to highlight this. Hi, how you doing? I'm so glad you can make it as well. <laughs> I'm trying out this couple hour later time. I usually go a little bit earlier in the day. Hey, yeah, you didn't think you'd make it. So I actually wrote down your question. So we haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, I was going to let people know. <laughs> I've been kind of hinting around at this for a while and trying to talk my husband into it. Uh, but we do a lot of landscape, wildlife, nature photography here in Colorado. And I always thought it would be fun to do, hey, Patty, fun to do a separate channel all about kind of those adventures of us together. We follow a lot of landscape and wildlife photographers and very, very few of them, none of them are husband and wife teams. And so I finally convinced Steve <laughs> to make a new YouTube channel of all of our uh, photography adventures, nature, wildlife, that kind of thing together here in Colorado and beyond. And it is under Cattail Chronicles. 
<laughs> now, we just launched this yesterday. I have a trailer, one minute trailer video. Uh, but if you're interested in my style and my goofy husband and I together, uh, photographing landscapes, nature, wildlife, Sony cameras, all that stuff here in Colorado and beyond, that might be a fun place for you. I have posted those type of videos here on this channel, but it tends to like segment my audience. So it's going to be fun. All right. So be sure to check that out. Patty, welcome. And Catherine, hi, you bought another SD card. Super duper. I am doing well. Oh, we had a little break in the heat. So today is so nice. When I went out to Animal Friends Alliance shelter, it was perfect. My helper and I, we meet as early as we possibly can uh, at 9.15 in the summer uh, because the dogs are getting like their morning routine going. We can't really meet any earlier than that. But it was, oh, it was just such perfect weather today. We photographed six dogs and tomorrow we'll be back up in the 90s, but whatever. <laughs> It's summer. That's how that goes. Yeah. So I hope you're doing well. Catherine, I know you're on summer break at this point, right? Yes. And you have lots of big plans for the summer. That's exciting. Patty, I just saw you uh, an Instagram post of a black dog that you posted that got adopted. That's awesome. Uh, Myra, I have your question queued up and ready to go. Let me make sure I've got all of my notes here. Uh, let's see. This is your chance to talk about the 10 week challenge. I said that check out pro pet photog prime day and uh, surprise cattail chronicles <laughs> new YouTube channel with my husband, Steve. <sighs> all right. I hope you all are doing well. You can drop a note in here at any time that goes for the replayers too. And so yeah, he got adopted. That's so great. Uh, we have um, one of the Humane Societies out here in Weld County that's east of us. They had a post this weekend saying, oh, my gosh, their shelter is at capacity for some reason. They're about 30 minutes-ish, maybe an hour east out into the prairies from here, and their shelter is at capacity. And so I Facebook messaged them. I said, hey, Frank and I maybe can come out and spend a couple hours and photograph as many of your adoptables as we possibly can. They have cats and dogs. And so they said, okay, but I haven't heard back when we're going to do that. I'm kind of hoping Friday. I think that's a good day for Frank and myself. And we can kind of make a day of it. Uh, we're both fully vaccinated. And so he and I can maybe go get a coffee before or after. I think that would be great fun. And it's fun to go to another shelter. And I like the challenge of, okay, where's a good spot to set up? Um, how is their staff run? Like, is, will there be anyone to help us? Uh, do they have any props? Um, would they like studio or outside? So I'm kind of excited to have a new challenge and help out this shelter. Uh, doing the cat talk, it will be fun. It's a little exhausting to do, run two channels. And um, like I have my full-time business, he works full-time. Plus he has a side gig he runs with his daughter. It's, I don't know what we're thinking, but that's okay. It'll be fun. <laughs> uh, Patty, you got to participate in a photo shoot with your camera club horses. Ah, that is so wonderful. And it's also really nice to hear that, we're able to get together a lot of us with other people again. And especially like if you're able to go outside Patty with horses, like you could be kind of far apart too. Yeah. That's so great. I've always wanted to try that, that horse photo where they stand in, in just the entryway of a barn. And so the front of the horse is lit, but the rest of the barn goes to black. I think that would be super pretty, especially like in the winter time where they can wear like um, kind of a winter thing here. <laughs> Oh, uh, what is that? It's almost like a wreath, but not like pokey and yucky. Uh, but yeah, that would be really pretty. I haven't done anything with Camera Club in quite a while. <laughs> I do have a session coming up with two horses, a dog or two, a little kid and his mom um, out in the prairies like an hour away. Uh, but we had to <laughs> we had to reschedule it a month or so ago because of big, big storms out there. So we're going to try it again in July. <laughs> we'll see. I won't be videoing that because there's a like a six-year-old in that. And so I don't want to add that layer. Uh, but I'll let you know about how it went. We did the entryway shoot, but need to do some things in Photoshop to make it look good. Okay. I was curious about that. I kind of assume that. I've seen some other people do some edits and um, 
yeah, like there's, it doesn't always go completely to black. And I've done some horse shoots and I've tried that. But you know what I've done is I've done it the opposite. I've made them into a silhouette. So I stand in the barn and then the person and their horse stand in the entry and you get some silhouette. So I've done it the opposite way. <laughs> but I would think, yeah, there'd be some cleanup in the background. I can't wait to see that. Hope you post it. Carolyn, hi. You were on the phone. Okay. You, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a kind of a free for all AMA style. I haven't even really started the um, the Q&A portion yet. I was kind of getting all of the housekeeping pieces going and saying hi to everyone. But it's so good to see you all here. Yay. Can I let you in on a little something something? One of my big things is I would love for us to get together IRL at some point, maybe maybe end of next summer or the next year, whenever I can get it together. Uh, my studio isn't very big, uh, but it would be cool to meet at a time where we can go outside and just kind of get together and talk about the business and craft and maybe do set up a photo shoot um, and just some time to talk about everything. Um, not like a super official, like let's meet up, it's $2,000, not something like that. Just kind of like, if you can get yourself to Colorado, let's get together. <laughs> So I would love to do something like that. So keep that on your radar for maybe, maybe the end of next summer, maybe. Yeah, I think that would be so great for anyone who can make it to Colorado. Keep that on your radar, okay? <laughs> yeah. So that's one of my big dreams. I'll let you know that little secret right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to jump into the question that Myra has, and she, she had asked in the Facebook group, I want to make sure I give you that banner too. Uh, there's a link from the propetphotog.com site, but just go to bit.ly uh, propetphotog FB, all lowercase, and you can get into that um, Facebook group. Be sure to answer those questions when you get there. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's a nice, nice growing group. Wouldn't it be a nice vacation in the summer, Carolyn? Yeah, I think so. Keep it on the radar. Okay, awesome. Okay, uh, so back to Myra's question. Myra said, and you're here, so um, pop in, Myra, when you want to, was what do you do with clingy pets? And I think you said clingy dogs specifically. Like the dogs who really just want to be next to their person. <laughs> and this, this can be a, a real challenge, can't it? I think it's twofold. So sometimes there's a dogs that just really love their person. They want to always be around their person. And maybe they're actually a little bit nervous to be in a new situation, um, trying to figure out who you are as a photographer and that big thing in your face called a camera. <laughs> and they're expected to do things they're not expected to do usually. So sometimes it's just the uncertainty uh, and that kind of thing. Um, what was I was going to say too? What was the other one? Oh, and sometimes it's just kind of what we've conditioned our dogs to be like. And this is what I find a lot is the dogs where we say, okay, sit, and then they get a treat. But what we've done is they're sitting practically on our feet or they only will go to one side of us. Like if you tell them to sit down, they will only sit in front of you. <laughs> So we've unconsciously, as just regular citizens, have trained our dogs to be right, right next to us. Um, but you can't do anything about that once you're at the session. Now, if you know ahead of time that the client will say, man, they're really clingy, you can give them some tips to work with them in the week or two before the session or however long you have uh, to help them keep the, the pet a little further away. Uh, let's see. I think you did an update here. Um, a very bonded dog. Okay. So yeah, so it can be difficult for them. So, you know, if you know it ahead of time, I'm a big proponent of doing consultations ahead of time. Now the last year and a half, those have been by phone. I do consultations in person a lot of times. Oh, thank you, Patty. And just kind of get to know what's happening and then find out if the owner can be in some of the pictures. So that's the easiest way, right? Maybe it's that foot down where the dog is sitting at their feet, maybe even looking up at them, looking at the camera, sitting between their feet. Those really, really cute pictures. Just tell them to wear their fam favorite uh, boots or shoes or whatever, um, or paint their toes, whatever, whatever people want to do. And the dog, they could be kind of in the picture or the one where the dog is looking over the shoulder. And so you kind of have the back of their hair or just a little sideways view. Uh, so sometimes having the owner in the picture a little bit, 
Um, another really practical thing, and this happens a lot at the shelters. We actually had this with a big dog today. This big dog was um, kind of shy a little bit until Lori sat on the ground. And then this big dog was like, oh, hey, because she'd read on his cage card that he was um, kind of a cuddler. <laughs> and this dog went right over, sat on her lap. And just like, hey, I'm I'm happy now. Um, so what happens a lot of times, especially with little dogs too, are the owner's first inclination is to sit on the ground with them. They want to get closer to them and make them feel better. But then you know what happens is that dog climbs in their lap <laughs> and they climb up them. And so I people are always like, oh, but ah, I always say stand up. You need to stand up. And this happens with my volunteers. It happens with client owners. Um, don't sit down <laughs> with your dog. And that is our first inclination, kneeling down, sitting down, trying to make them feel better, just right there at their level, which is great. But then the dog's like, okay, now I need you more, right? And they're trying to climb all up on them. Uh, so one of the things is just to have the owner stand, one thing that ha usually works okay is even if they're separated by a one foot, they only need to be a foot away and I can cut out the person, <laughs> you know, you can crop and, and do some magic in the Photoshop, but um, it's just to have the treat a little further away. Where am I? So if the dog, instead of being like right here and you just give them a treat right here, and I'm sure if you've been to the shelters, you do this a lot have the treat like way over here. And so they can sit, but they're going to be way over here. And then if people walk really carefully, slowly backwards, like take one step back, but you have to time it just right because dogs are like, hey, I've been sitting here for 10 years, <laughs> you know? Um, and so sometimes once they get kind of comfortable with the area, like, oh, okay. So if I sit, I will get a treat. And so that person can step back for just that moment. And then another thing you can try is throwing the treats. And so sometimes you throw it and you can try to get like a little rhythm going. <laughs> so if you throw it and they circle and then the, when they pick up the treat, their face is facing you. Cause sometimes people throw it and the dog runs away and you have their back end view, not the brightest, right? So if you can get them to kind of throw the treat and then once the dog kind of make a noise or something novel and the dog will look up and they'll already be away from the person. Um, so they can be on a leash for that too you know, or in the studio. Um, so I hope some of that helps. It can be really difficult and you might need to take just a little bit more time with them and just kind of talk to the person a lot too and say, you know, what makes them more comfortable? Uh, sometimes a piece of furniture. <laughs> so if the dog could be on a chair, I've done this a few times. There's a chair in my studio or say a bench or a log or a, a rock at a natural area. If they can, if the dog can be kind of on this pedestal and the person can be just far enough away. And then the other kind of trick is to get an empty shot so that when you go to edit, and I never remember this, but I'm going to try, I'm going to try to remember this <laughs> is get an empty shot of nobody in that scene if you can. And then you have, you can clone in the tree or the backdrop or whatever, where the person was. So you have these two layers. Is that, is that helpful at all, Myra? I hope so. Yeah. Um, if you're still here, let me know what else was like, was it in a studio? Was it big dog, little dog? Are any of these helpful? What did you try that actually ultimately worked? We'd love to know. Patty, thank you. Whoop, whoop. And Catherine. All right. <laughs> Carolyn, I love the posing suggestions. It might be good for you to offer a posing guide. You might be able to sell that or use it as a marketing tool. Okay. Yeah. You know what I do have is my five go-to... <laughs> I hold up 10, my five go-to shots. And I have um, like a free guide, but then I have a more expanded guide to show a little bit more. But I haven't thought necessarily about a posing one. Um, so something more in depth, that's a good idea. Yeah. I like it. Um, I used to, <laughs> what I used to do, Carolyn, is make little stick figure of uh, if I wasn't sure how I wanted to pose a session was, okay, so I've got two people and a dog. How would I put them together? So I would stick figure each frame on a piece of paper. Okay, what if what if the person here and then a the person here and the dog here? Okay, what if person here, person here, dog here? Okay, person here, person here, dog up on a chair. Like I would draw out all of these ideas and then take it with me <laughs> to the session. And it really worked. Uh, some people call that a tear sheet. 
Uh, so you can go and get inspiration from someone else's picture and say, okay, I would, I want to try to recreate that pose. Uh, but yeah, I actually have enough photos. I could make a little tear sheet book. That's a good idea. Woohoo. Oh, I, I, I'm going to write that down in my rocket book right now. Tear sheet posing guide. Sweet. Thank you very much. Myra, the owner was in. Oh, okay. Didn't get a part of just a dog. Oh, that happens sometimes. Um, as long as like, what's your follow up to that? And Michelle, go, I've done that great. Yeah, yeah. I just have to remind myself of that <laughs> more often, especially when you think, oh, it's just, it's grass. Like I do a lot where there's a meadow and a grass you feel. And I think, oh, that'll be easy. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's just messy grass. <laughs> No, it's not. Yeah. So Myra, I would think that as long as they understood that going in and they didn't have a huge expectation of having a ginormous gallery of just a dog and just a few of them um, and just kind of communicate as you go. Sometimes that's what you're going to get. And what you do is just set them up for next time. So often while I'm in a session now for any of you pro photographers out here, uh, big tip right now. While you're in the session, you're selling the next session. Okay, so while you're in this session, you can say, yeah, we got a lot of you and the puppy. So, you know, next year or in six months, when you come back, um, this will give you time to do some training and here's some tricks that you could try. And then the next time we'll focus in more on the dog. <laughs> and then you've planted the seed in their brain that there's going to be a next session because this happens a lot. Like I get idea overload. And so maybe we're in a studio and I have like five ideas and we implement on two of them because the first two went well, whatever the reason. So while we're going, I'll say, okay, yeah, I know we didn't get to this background or this prop, but we will next time. We got so many great ones with these two. Let's call it right now. And then the next session, we'll throw in these other things. And people love that. And it's not overwhelming at that point. <laughs> um, same thing for puppies. Like I did two little tiny puppy sessions last year and I've contacted them both to do their adult sessions because while we were at the puppy session, I said, oh, great. Now next summer, <laughs> when puppies all adult, we could do this again and you can have them to compare. And so one of them I'm scheduling for a little bit later this summer. So always be kind of prepping them for the next session. Maybe this one was an indoor, next time it's gonna be outdoor, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, Patty uh, seconds the posing guide. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, take photos of poses. Yes, that's exactly it. Exactly. That's perfect. Carolyn, tear sheet's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I think that's kind of an old school term. I don't know. Um, but swap files, people call them all kinds of things. Having a little gallery in your phone is awesome. Yeah. The owner was lovely. She was more interested in photos of two of them. Oh, we did want to get one of just the pup. We did, but I want it to be better. You know, and there's always one of those, right, Myra? Like, often I will walk away from a session. Mm, I wish I'd gotten this one picture. I had this in my mind or something we really were trying so hard. Um but give yourself a little bit of space from that session. And then when you go back and look at them later, you'll go, okay, this was pretty good. <laughs> and so you know that like next time you'll get those individuals of the puppy. So I, I bet she'll be really happy with them though. Zach George has a great dog training channel, just in case anybody has clients wanting to help learn and train their dog. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of good dog training channels, right? Um, I was interviewed on one. I haven't seen her post in a little while. It's called Dingle Days. That's her her dog's name. No, her dog's name is Disney. <laughs> but she interviewed me on her uh, channel, and it was about like dog training and a little bit of photography. Um, and a lot of times there's... Yeah, we are hard on ourselves. Hold on. Um, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. Um, like my dog trainer, I had them on for an episode here on YouTube. A lot of dog trainers last year started to do virtual too, <laughs> which is awesome. So you could do a Zoom. Uh, I did uh, a video production for some commercials for a local dog trainer here. And she has like an online learning. So online classroom, I think she calls it. And so if you have a new puppy, no matter where you live, you can subscribe to her puppy class and it has just like tons of different classes you can watch uh, for puppies and adults and um, 
advanced. <laughs> so I did a really great commercial for her. There, it's we're really lucky to have a lot of great trainers on online. Yeah, my you're we are we are super hard on ourselves, and I use that trick I just told you all the time. Now, last summer, I did kind of a funny video talking about how exhausted I was after a puppy photo shoot saying, oh, it was the worst ever. Oh, it was the best ever. Oh, it was the worst ever. Oh, it was the best ever. And it happens every time. And we think, oh, it's just us, right? It's not. All of us go through that. This is such a creative endeavor. It's hard not to feel that way. Um, but I find, I really find taking a breath from that work. Like oftentimes I will come home from a session. I will load all the pictures on the computer just to make sure they're off the card. I'm not going to format that card, get them on the computer, do a quick scan through like, okay, things are in focus. I see a couple keepers right there and then I'll walk away until the next day. And that helps so much because in that moment, we're like, oh, this didn't happen. And that happened. And we're thinking of all those stories that happen behind the scenes. And that's why I you know, toyed with the idea, too, of having same-day sales meetings. Number one, that's exhausting. It would be great for people's schedules, but um, we're just remembering the story of the session way too much, and we tend to think of the stuff that didn't go right. Um, and now that's fun to have those stories, I think, <laughs> but sometimes it gets in the way of liking some of the photos because we wanted it to be different. So just taking a day or two away from them makes such a big difference. Have you found that? Have any of you found that where you think, oh, oh my gosh, I have no idea if I got anything. And you go back after a couple of days and go, well, hey there, I did a pretty good job after all. <laughs> it wasn't exactly as I envisioned, but of course it's not. <laughs> you know, so yes, we are very hard on ourselves, uh, but we're learning every day. So as long as we we keep learning and we keep trying, that's it. That's all we got to do. Yeah, Catherine, we'll be photographing a family friend's dog in a few weeks. When you're in Washington, I'm happy to photograph a dog again. Yes, or are you into Washington D.C. or state? Oh, I'm curious now. I lived in Washington State for most of my life, the first 40 years anyway, and uh, have a lot of really pretty places that I went to, camping and whatnot. So yay, I'm so glad you get to photograph a dog, take a bunch, share them with us in the Facebook group, of course, <laughs> and everywhere, you know. Myra, that is what I do too. Okay, I just need to know if things were actually okay that I want to take a break from the session before I start editing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what else I've found is I will often, and Patty agrees with that advice, I will often cull through and pick, you know, star mine that I like. And then I'll sometimes go, okay, I thought I had one more individual of this dog. And then I'll go through the pictures I didn't choose and suddenly see a whole bunch more. <laughs> I was like, why did I rule these out? I like them after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so giving ourselves a little bit of space from some of those is good. And actually, it's good for the client, too, because uh, the client needs that break. They're so tired. Yeah. Washington State. Whoop, whoop. Okay. That's great. I was down in southwest Washington near Portland, Oregon. I raised my kids in Camas, which is just east of Portland on the Washington side of the river, the Columbia River that separates Oregon and Washington. Uh, beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, I hope you get a chance to go to the beach. I miss the beach very much. I saw the beach for about a minute <laughs> when I visited my daughter in uh, Georgia. We went to Tybee Island, but it was so stormy that day. I looked at the ocean. I got like super wind and rain done and I got back in the car. <laughs> but I love Long Beach, Washington. It's really just sandy and quiet, except for the kite festival. Um, we're considering going back out to um, the San Juan Islands up, you know, kind of just south of Canada there. Just love the San Juan Islands. We might go there this fall, uh, which we would record for Cattail Chronicles YouTube channel. <laughs> um, yeah. So you're going to get such a cool, like, green, lush view while you're there, Catherine. That's really fun. I'm happy for you. Yay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what time do we have? 4.30. I have to look around my microphone because I'm going to stand here. Uh, how is everyone doing with the challenge? I know I'm throwing a lot at you with this whole 10-week challenge. It's almost, it's almost done. 
I have to record one more. I would love to include all of you in week 11. <laughs> so uh, I already recorded all the way up through week nine. I'm going to record week 10 this week. And then after that, what I'd love to do is an, like an epilogue of the 10 week challenge. And I would really, really love to include you, your thoughts on the challenge, what you've learned. I want to see what you've produced. If you would give me an okay for that, I would love that. You can, we can talk about it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Where's my email? Here we go. You can email me your thoughts or your examples or just your okay to pull them off of social or wherever. Uh, but I do want to include you all in this because you're the ones doing all this hard work. <laughs> so I would love to include you in the epilogue of the uh, 10 week challenge. So yeah, you're behind. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's really a lot. But I would love any input on any of the weeks, even if you didn't have a chance to do it, and you want to do it kind of like why, and how you think it'll help you. I would just I don't know, I think it's really interesting. Did I create something that really was helpful? Challenges are fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any questions about the challenge, my, my thoughts on the challenge were to help you with the, the craft with editing, with uh, creativity, getting those creative juices flowing. And then at the end, having something you can put all these pieces together for a session, uh, your next session, you have all these bits and pieces, and you can go into your next session confidently with these new skills in place. So that's what I was hoping for with this brief challenge. Carolyn, I currently have a Rebel, a Canon Rebel T3i. I have my eye on a $1,900 package for Canon EOS 6D and lenses. What do you think will help me improve most? This package or better lenses? Hmm. I really don't know Canon cameras that well. I've heard a lot of great things about them. My husband used to be a Canon shooter, but I didn't, I haven't really shot much with Canons. They're awesome. Like Canon, Sony, Nikon, uh, Fuji, they're all kind of at the same plane right now. Don't you think? They're all really good. Uh, it kind of depends why you want to upgrade. Okay. So have you met the limits of your Canon Rebel T3i? Have you maxed out everything it can do? Like you have, you know where all the buttons and knobs and dials are and it just, it suited you at the time, but now you just feel like it's holding you back. Is your camera itself holding you back? Does it not go to the ISO you need? Does it not have the pixels you need? Uh, the autofocus is huge. Um, so those are the things you need to think about when you're upgrading your camera or you're considering it. Upgrading lenses, I'm not gonna say it's always a good idea, but oftentimes, you know, putting the money in the lens is really important because that can go on to your next camera too. So it kind of, it depends on what you need and what, what plateau you're at with your work. And then for lenses, think about if you have Lightroom, here's the advice I give people for lenses. Go through all of your favorite pictures in Lightroom and then pull them all together in like a collection. And then you can sort them by attributes and one of them being the um, the millimeter. <laughs> oh, did And so what you wanna do is look for, geez, was I at 50 a lot? Was I at 28 a lot? Was I at 120 millimeters a lot? And that will help you decide what your next lens is. Either it'll show you a gap that you really wish you had, or it'll say, you know what? I'm really always, always shooting that 70 to 200, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's a way you can help decide which lens you want to go with next. Yeah. Was that helpful <laughs> without knowing the, you know, those, those particular cameras? I will say, Carolyn, that it is <laughs> prime day today and tomorrow. And if you go through any of the links in my descriptions of my videos, uh, no matter, you don't have to even buy that. I get a teeny tiny commission. So if you're thinking about, doing prime day. I'm just saying. You feel like you have, you need higher ISO and wider aperture. Well, then you need both, right? Um, so if you really feel like you've hit a wall there um, and you've really explored that camera, it might be time. Now, I am that person who's like, yeah, get the gear. <laughs> so don't be mad at me when your checkbook yells at you. <laughs> but I really think if you look at it objectively and go, okay, Every time I pick up this camera and I can't, I cannot fulfill this order or this vision of what I want out of these photos, it just, 
it can't work anymore, then that's a sign, right? Yeah. Patty, now that I'm not as flexible as I used to, I wish my D810 had a flip screen. Oh, it doesn't, does it? Golly, you know that D810, that came out, oh, was that like seven or eight years ago now? And it's such a great camera still. <laughs> like people just really love that camera. It's a good one. But yeah, the flippy screen, you're right. Hmm. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. I've had flippy screens now for a little while. <laughs> it is very helpful. Myra, Canon, make sure the camera will allow enough frames per second if you're going to shoot action. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, you're right. It kind of depends on uh, what you plan on shooting too. So different cameras, I know in the Sony lineup, some of them are really meant for studio work and some are really meant for action sports, you know? So kind of look at those specs as well. Good, good point, Myra. Yeah. You're welcome. Morgan. Hello, we haven't talked in a minute. You'd love to own the D810. Yeah, yeah, that was like, kind of like the landscape uh, camera there for a long time. Tons of people in my camera club had it. It was a great camera. At that time, I got the D610 or 600, D600. That's what I could afford at that point. It was a great camera too. If you do a search of the Rebel versus the Canon 6D, you'll get a good overview of whether you should move up to that model. That's true. Yeah. DP Review. DP Review has tons of tech specs too. Yeah. Patty, you got yours used. Ah, Z7 II. Is that? Okay. So Jared Frono's photo, didn't he just do something saying that the new Nikon was leaked? So I don't know if that's the one you're talking about, Patty. Um, at some point, I'm going to go back to Camera Club again here locally it's it's the one I was president of for like two years and I know a bunch of people in there have the mirrorless Nikons I would love to just hang out with them and say how's it going what how are you liking these cameras um there's such a variety in camera clubs <laughs> yeah okay shoot a lot of dogs and actions frames per second is referring to video no uh there's two ways to think about that so frames per second yes that's a lot of video talk but um it also can mean like how many frames it can shoot in a burst reliably and be in focus. So like my Sony A9 II, it's really made for high action wildlife. It only has 24 frames, um, 24 pickles, <laughs> 24 megapixels, but it has like, it can shoot 24 frames in a second, which is basically video. <laughs> now you move up to the Sony a7R 4 and it has 60 megapixels. So it can't shoot as much. It's just too much for your camera and your SD card to figure out. So um, that's something to think about. And most of the times it's just written in like high, medium and low. Um, so yeah, think about that. I would definitely recommend renting it. Uh, rent it for like a week and have things lined up that you can photograph. Doesn't matter what it is. That's when I bought the Z Sony ZB-1 last summer. I rented it for a week and I went and I wanted it for video. So I, all my friends who own businesses, I said, I'm going to come over and I'm going to do a video for you. Just like little bits and pieces video. Yeah. Uh, listening to you while I was driving till I got home. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel like I haven't done a QA and a in a while, but you know, I had all that construction going on. So um, trying to get back to the monthly Q and A again. It's how many shots you can get in a burst. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Z72. Oh, Z9. Is that what was just leaked? Okay. Does have more focus points, more mega pickles, and flip screen plus animal. I have. Yes. Yes. I can't wait to hear when you get that. That'll be cool. Like, oh yeah, eight frames per second. Yep, more would be even better. Yeah. Rent some gear and then make up your mind. Absolutely. I um, I did that a couple times last fall or last year. So I rented the Sony ZB-1, instantly fell in love with it. The second the ZB-2 comes out, I'm buying that thing. <laughs> I use it for almost all of my um, YouTube videos. And I even use it on some client work <laughs> for video. Um, and then when I was getting my mid-range lens, I was trying to decide the Tamron 28 to 75 or the Sony um, 70, 24 to 70. And I rented them both. 
And it was really good to do that. <laughs> it saved me a lot of money because I realized that Tamron could do what I wanted for like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars less. So uh, definitely a good idea to rent those and compare. But compare them to what you really want to shoot, you know. So if you want to shoot action, make sure you have some action set up, that kind of thing. Yeah. And actually some rental companies, you can apply that towards buying it. Not the places I've gone to lately, but you could. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Morgan, almost bought the Z5. Was unsure if it was fast enough for use with pets or good enough in low light. And, you know, honestly, I haven't even caught, kept been uh, catching up to any of the new uh Nikon or Canon gear. Uh, I know when Nikon first came out with their mirrorless, people were a little bit underwhelmed. Um, so then I just, uh, I don't have enough bandwidth, I guess, <laughs> to know all the different brands, but I'm glad you all do. So you can talk about it in the comments too. Um, I think they're, they're moving up, like people are liking them more. So great. I would love to hear too. And obviously you can share it in the Facebook group as well. Um, since I don't, I don't really know all that. And there are some people in the Facebook group who aren't on YouTube. <laughs> um, so it's nice to kind of cross advise. Yeah. Let me get a little bit of water. Ah, <sighs> what else do I have coming up? Uh, I, th what I want to do, keep asking your questions. I'm watching the chat bar. What I would like to do is I did a poll in the Facebook group and I asked people why they were in the group, what you want to learn more or experience more in there. And overwhelmingly, people wanted to learn more on the business side. Now, I know here on YouTube, a lot of it's more on the gear side and the craft, uh, but I really want to talk some more about the business side. So I'm crafting a few videos like they're just in the outline phase right now for the business side of being a pet photographer. And so that is something I'm going to do a little bit more probably near the end of summer. Let's see, we've got two or three more of the challenge videos, the follow-up video. Um, yeah, so it'll probably be close to August. I want to do a few videos on the business of pet photography. If there's anything uh, burning question that you have for me to cover in that it won't be like necessarily a series, but it'll be kind of a series. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it won't be one after another, like this challenge has been, but it'll just be like a group uh, playlist, I guess, of different business videos. And I thought I'd keep that pretty simple and kind of, uh, you know, like one concept per, per video. And then I'm trying to decide if it should be basically for when you're first starting out, or, you know, I guess if you're reimagining things. Um, I know a lot of the questions people have are, and I address this during my birthday video, like, am I good enough? Should I even start? Um, the legal part of it, I don't want to get into too much because it's so different in wherever you live in the world. Um, what I want to talk about a little bit is marketing and maybe pricing, you know, how to find the clients and um, kind of keep them interested. There's a lot of stuff for that. And then um, maybe a little bit on pricing, but I'm toying around with making that something that's in the membership. Um, it gets dated pretty quickly, <laughs> you know? And so I'm not sure if I want to put that mostly in the community center membership or a course. I could probably touch on it a little bit here on a, a general YouTube video. But if you have other businessy type questions that you're kind of curious about, you know, maybe like what Carolyn was asking, how do I know when to, if my gear is up for the challenge of being a, a pet photographer uh, part or full time and when to upgrade, stuff like that. So there's just, I, I am an idea machine. <laughs> I always have ideas, but I wanted to resonate with you as well and be helpful in your life and your journey as a pet photographer. Uh, so I'll be crafting some videos on that. <sighs> and I haven't really thought a whole lot past that, <laughs> the 10 week challenge and that. I always have a Google Doc going with all kinds of ideas. <laughs> I would love to really take you along on another photo session, uh, which will be a little bit easier now that a lot of people are vaccinated and it's nice out, we can go outside. Uh, so I just need to um, generally like to do that with repeat clients. And so the one that was a puppy last year, maybe she'd agree to, that I could film 
uh, her session this summer and get my assistant out too. So I need to message my assistant and see if she can come on that and help with, with video too. It's really hard to video me taking photos. You should have seen me on the trail this weekend trying to make the episode for Cattail Chronicles because I do all the video. <laughs> so I've got my camera that I'm using for photography on my belt, my spider holster. Plus I've got my GoPro. Plus I got the ZV-1. And every time I try to take a picture, I have to set it down and make sure I'm not sitting on a cactus or a rattlesnake and then pick up my other camera. I'm like, this is mind boggling. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. So I need an assistant. <laughs> Catherine, my neighborhood is now doing pet of the month for the magazine for the neighborhood. And I get to send and take, oh, that is so wonderful. I've had some magazines approach me for that. And I, I don't, I can't remember why I haven't done it, but a pet of the month, they usually, the magazines I've talked to want to do like a family, which is fine, but that's so cool. That is really awesome. Congratulations. Ah, I'd love to see those too. And that's great marketing, right? Um, and generally, um, Catherine, is what you would do is, so when I do things like this, I'm just going to throw out some advice you didn't ask for. <laughs> when I do things like this, I don't go and just take that one picture for the magazine. I do a full session, right? And so they get to pick that one that goes in the magazine, but then I can do my sales meeting too. And I tell the magazine or whoever I'm working with up front that that's what I'm going to do is especially if this is a volunteer gig now if they're paying you that's different uh, but if you're volunteering to do this for the magazine you say okay great i'm going to actually do a full session and i'm going to offer to sell uh, additional prints and products and digitals and whatever um, so keep that in mind while you take on these pet of the month don't just take one take a whole session there you go <laughs> take it or leave it whatever you want to do Great idea for the neighborhood. Excellent marketing for you too. Yeah, yeah, it's great marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would really, you know, Carolyn, I think there's a couple of people I follow on YouTube and you see their whole photo session as they go. And usually it's just like a model, you know, some 20 year old, like, okay. Uh, like that's not really my genre, but it's still fascinating to see how they work. Um, so I'd love to just like do a whole photo shoot behind the scenes, you know, <laughs> lofty goals. We have ticks and wild parsnips to watch for, no battle snakes or cactus. Ooh, ticks. Yes. We definitely have those, especially um, in May and June. I had a client I met with the other day and her dogs had run through the field and we met for the sales meeting. She goes, and I checked them all over for ticks and I didn't find any on myself or my dogs. But she said like two days later, her golden retriever came to her and had a ginormous tick, not even attached, just crawling along her dog's nose. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. Too bad I don't live in Colorado. Apply for a chance to be your assistant. No doubt they'll improve my <laughs> You know, Carolyn, I don't know if you were here at the top of the show when I shared one of my little secrets is that I would love to have a get together. I think you were here. I would just love maybe next summer, maybe people just show up in Colorado and we'll hang out and we'll share our knowledge and maybe I'll set up a couple of photo shoots. Like not for realsies, like big time workshop, uh, more casual. So make sure you're on the list, the email list, because you'll hear is a plant with sap that burns. Oh, I don't think I like that. Is it kind of like poison oak, poison ivy? I don't, I don't want any parsnips now. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I know it was unsolicited advice. I have to be careful when I just give out advice, <laughs> but I'm glad it was helpful. Even if you don't do it now, keep it in mind for future endeavors. You have ticks too. Yeah. Sprayed them. Sprayed yourself with D. Oh, that's probably a good idea. I never thought of that. I'm that person who gets eaten by mosquitoes and then go, oh yeah, there's mosquito spray. <laughs> and it's too late because I'm covered in mosquito bites. <laughs> Arg. <laughs> a good get together would be awesome. Yes. Okay. Whoop, whoop. I just love this idea. What? Okay. So here's, here's the initial thoughts of a gathering here. Okay. 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 First of all, I would just, I would love to have my own property and building, but that's not going to happen in the next year. I would love it if people, you just figure out how to get here, get your transportation or get some lodging and maybe we'd have like a meal a day together that people would pitch in for and then just kind of like hang out. It could just be like we're doing right now, Q&A. Maybe I'll, I can have a couple of things prepared, but I don't want to go crazy with it, right? 
and then have a couple of photo shoots maybe and just have like a day and a half or two days. I think that would be great fun. And I get to actually meet y'all in person. Ah, so no, like no pressure and, but no big like promises of a big, you know, transformation of your whole life for <laughs> business. You know what I mean? So kind of a casual meetup of everybody from around the world. <laughs> Anywho, if you're game for that, it could happen next summer. <laughs> it looks like Queen Anne's Lace. Ah, it does? Okay, because I'm pretty sure we had Queen Anne's Lace in Washington State, but it was not. It wasn't poisonous. Ooh. Oh. Colorado's not in the books. Such a fun meeting. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm giving you a little heads up. Maybe in the next year or two. Then maybe you can. <laughs> it would be great. One thing I do have to work around in Colorado <laughs> is wildfires. We had massive wildfires last year. And so I get a little worried about scheduling anything for August because of that. And I have to not think that way. Like, I've lived here nine years now. The first year I moved here, they just gotten over wildfires. So there's been like two years that have had a lot of wildfires. So I need to just like not project <laughs> that onto the future, right? Yeah. And that's probably what's kind of holding me back from even planning a wedding reception. I haven't even had our wedding reception <laughs> um, because I thought, well, maybe it'll be the summer. And then vaccines rolled out kind of a little bit slower than we expected. Um, and now we're having, we're hosting um, Steve's youngest daughter will be 18 soon. So we're hosting her birthday party. So that'll be like the first thing we've even hosted at this house. Um, at some point I will have my wedding reception as well. <laughs> All right, we're getting to the end of the hour. Um, slide in any of your last minute questions now or comments or anything like that. I'm happy to answer them during this monthly Q&A. Uh, keep in mind, if you are in the ProPet Photog uh, Community Center, um, those are, we have private Q&As. And so we have, you know, kind of more intimate. So keep that in mind. If you ever feel like, um, joining the community center. Check that page out anyway, because I have all kinds of things in there. Uh, one of the things I'm working on this week is um, I think I'm going to make the next asset I make for that <coughs> will be um, email sequence. Yeah. So sometimes people say, what should I write in this email? And I have like a whole set of them. Let me make this go away. How do I do this? Okay. I have a whole set of emails that I um, send out to people from inquiry all the way through the thank you. So I think I'm going to make some email templates. In what city would we meet? So I can start researching lodging. Ah, okay. Uh, so you would fly into Denver and then we would meet here in Loveland, which is about an hour north of Denver in the front range. So Loveland, Fort Collins area. Yeah, yeah. It's it's gorgeous here. Right on the front range. The Rocky Mountains are right there. I could be... <laughs> from my house inside Rocky Mountain National Park in one hour. It's, it's amazing. It's, it, I just, every time I go up to Rocky, I'm just like, I'm standing here. I can't believe I'm actually standing here. You know, ah, it's a dream right now. They have timed entry permits. So uh, it's much, much harder to get into national parks, especially Rocky is one of the top two in the country. So um, we went to Rocky when my sister was here and hopefully we'll get to go again. But I know the timed entry tickets go really, really fast. So we hope to go in the fall for some fall colors or along the Peak to Peak Highway or something. But yeah, just look for Loveland, Fort Collins. Fort Collins is a little bit bigger <laughs> than Loveland. Uh, if you want to take a drive, Denver's like an hour. So there's that. Yes. I do know one person who had a, uh Airbnb, like one of her bedrooms at her condo she's a single gal with one cat. I don't know if she still has her Airbnb going after last year, but otherwise I don't know a lot of lodging here <laughs> besides just regular hotels. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any last questions, anyone? Any last questions? Any last questions? Feel free to watch the replay if you came in a little bit late. There was juicy goodness all throughout this hour. And um 
I'm trying to keep up with the once a month Q&A here on YouTube. But again, be part of that email list and you will know. I remember to put it in this Friday one and I put it in the Facebook group too. I know we all have a lot going on and there's always events popping up, online events. <laughs> so I appreciate you all being here very, very much. Uh, we got our little community going. I love that. Woohoo. All right. Awesome. I would love that. I don't think you're that far away, Carolyn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for me? Huh? 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 Before I go, it's cool enough today. I better take my little dog for a walk. She would appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, oh my gosh. Am I going to any photography conventions? You slid it in at the last second, Morgan. <sighs> okay. I've been trying to decide if I want to go to PPA's imaging, but it's in Washington, D.C. And I'm just, it's such a big, big city that I'm so nervous to go. Like, I just feel like I'm going to get lost or something or be super, super overwhelmed. But I'm I'm trying to decide if I want to go to Imaging USA in January, which is part of the PPA, Professional Photographers of America. It's really inexpensive this next year. So I might, but I'm looking for more. I posted that on LinkedIn. I would love to go to something that, that's talking about media or video, um, business. I want to go to a business conference so bad. <laughs> um, so I'm looking for 2022 places, if you know of any, besides imaging. Yeah. Patty, you're welcome. Okay, I thought you were in Texas. That's not far at all. <laughs> and Catherine, you'll be like graduated. Yeah. Washington, D.C., yeah, it is. Okay, well, Patty, um, if you look at PPA, I think if you just go to Imaging USA, they've got, like, their tickets have been cut in half. Even their hotels are cheaper next year. Uh, I love the bridging the gap. So Jeffrey Shaw, I have talked about him a lot, um, author, photographer. He started, I'm going to credit him, because <laughs> I believe he started the bridging the gap, where if maybe you're kind of, you you don't really want to go to all photography classes. You can go to these business classes and uh, they have some incredible keynote speakers. Usually there's about, there is 10,000 people that go. <laughs> so it's very overwhelming, especially after this year of being around one person, and a dog. Um, so that's part of it too. <laughs> um, but you know, they're making it much more affordable next year. So there's that. You're welcome, Morgan. You are welcome. Yeah. All right. I am going to sign off. If you do have questions, type it, type them, and I will see them after the show. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, if you need to email me at any point, y'all know this. Okay. What do I always end with? What do I always end with? It is... <laughs> Say it with me. As always, I wish you many whoops, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S-S. <laughs> Have an awesome, awesome week and rest of June, and I will see you in July. Okay, everyone. Bye. See you. Great to see you. Thanks for being here.